Praise God, church. Let us believe and pray. Almighty God, Father, I come before you this evening to present and fellowship you. Father, we adore your name, Father, at this juncture time. The Lord, Father, our merciful God, Father, our provider. Lord, Father, have been always, Father, protecting us all year since Alpha and Omega we met last Sunday till today, Father, on Friday of 23rd, February this 2024. Lord, Father, I say thank you for this, Father, that Ebenezer, Father, have brought unto us. Lord, Father, as we come, Father, into your service, Ebenezer, to call upon your name. Alpha and Omega, to render your, our hearts, Ebenezer, to you. Now, Lord, Father, you may wash our sins, Father, Lord, Father, you may purify our bodies. Now, Lord, Father, we may sanctify, Father, our behavior, so that Ebenezer, we can please you, Father, in all our ways, Father, in all our manners. And, Lord, Father, we also to hear from you that, Father, you cannot only, Father, be listeners, but, Father, do us of your word, so that Ebenezer, you can be part and parcel of our lives, so that Alpha and Omega, we can meet the requirement of Ebenezer to inherit your kingdom. And, Lord, Father, we shall say thank you. Lord, during this time, Father, we have come from you. Ebenezer, Father, you call upon your name. For all Christian Father who have assembled here, Alpha and Omega, to hear from you, the Lord Father may open their inner ears to hear from you, so that Ebenezer, the one Father can bless them and Father can be part and parcel of their life, so that Alpha and Omega can change their life and Ebenezer, they can see your working part, your working hand in their life. Thank you, Father. We pray and Father worship you because you are our God, and Lord Father, you are our protector. Through Jesus Christ, we do pray, trust, and believe. Thank you. Praise God once again. My name is Arfestas Opio Philip, a student from Bishop Anton Institute. Being my second year in Bishop Anton Institute and by the privilege of God and the privilege of our area dean, our school dean, I've been sent here as a student and by God's grace, I have come together during this evening so that we can hear from the word of God so that it can empower us, so that we as Christians we can live a life which is righteous, a life which will please God, and a life which even people back there in the society can imitate upon us to see that we, indeed, we are Christians, and they can echo from us. Praise God once again. So this evening we are humble, especially during this time of Lent, as we pray, as we fast, as we give alms to our brothers and sisters who are outside there, who are in need of stations. We pray that may God work unto our lives, that may God use us, we being his Christians, so that we can minister the word of God, so that we can deliver to the people whom he made on the earth, so that they can be good people, so that they can change their lives, and peace may pass all of them, so that in due time and due course, they can hear from the word of God, and they can be good people on this earth. So, in this evening, we want to share our word or our homily in this evening from Psalms 55. And my topic is finding healing and deliverance in times of trouble. Psalm 55, this book is among the poetic books found in the Old Testament. And the book of Psalms is authored by many authors. We have Sons of Korah, we have Solomon, we have Moses, and we have many others like Ethan. But in this chapter, chapter 55, we are going to read from, this is a chapter that is authored by David, who is a king of Israel, a David, David who is a musician, and who is talented in playing harps. So this evening, our theme being finding healing and deliverance in times of trouble. Brothers and sisters, as you assemble here, I know each and every one of us has his or her own problem, his or her own tribulation that he or she finds in her life or in his life, that even at a time, he or she is unable to fulfill whatever he or she wants in his or her life. That's why we normally say that in all our lives that we do reside in, we have many troubles that we get in our lives, but whatever which matters, that Whatever problem we encounter in our lives, whichever situation, however hard may it be in our lives, whatever we encounter, we should know that we have God who is trustworthy, who is faithful to us, who is our protector, and who cannot forsake us in times of joy or in times of sorrow. So finding healing and deliverance in times of 
trouble. David's strong emotions and Annie's plea for deliverance provide a relevant backdrop for our own struggles in life. Does the message of finding refugee healing and deliverance through faith and trust in God's paramount is paramount to we as Christian, is paramount to we as believers of the word of God. In the life that we're siding in, in the life that we're living in, we as people of God, we as people from various societies, we do encounter a lot of problems. But it depends on we as Christians that where do we rest our faith? Where do we rest our trust? Where do we find a place to rest our burdens or our troubles that we do encounter in life? And we rest our troubles to Jesus Christ. We rest our troubles to God Almighty, who is our maker, that he may relieve us the burden of our hearts, that he may relieve us the burden of whatever we undergo in the life that we are living in. Praise God once again. So this evening, this truth that glorification must wait for the resurrection. Our first point is assurance of God's faithfulness. Finding healing and deliverance in times of trouble that we are assured of God's faithfulness in our lives. That we should know this, I take it from verse 9 to verse 15 of Psalm 55. It reveals of David's steadfast love and confidence in God's ability to deliver him. David believes on being delivered from the hands of his enemies through God's power to save him in life. Sometimes in life we encounter a lot of troubles. But we should remain faithful to God who will deliver us. So in verse 9 and to 16, David knows that he has God in heaven. David as a king, he knew that despite of the troubles that he was undergoing through, because here he was being betrayed by a close friend. At the beginning of the chapter, David says that the one betraying me is a closest friend of mine. A friend whom I ate together with him. A friend who, to whom we were together several times in the temple, worshiping God, being together each and every time. But now he has come to a place that he is betraying me. He has now become, he has now changed his nature from being my friend to become now my enemy. Now even he, does want, he doesn't want any positive thing to come from me. But he is always looking at the negative side of my life. That's why David had confidence in God. That's why David had strong confidence that God one day will deliver him. Because he knew that God was faithful unto his life. Because he knew that he had almighty creator of heaven and earth. Who could one day deliver him from the troubles of his life? Who could one day rescue him and deliver him and relieve him the burdens that he was undergoing in his life? because of his friend who was plotting evil against him. So, brethren, we as people of God, we as Christians, we need to believe in the assurance of faithfulness of God. We need to have faithfulness in God. We need to be assured that despite of all tribulations that we do encounter in this world, that despite of the burdens of, of we as Christians that we do face in our lives, we must know that we are assured of the faithfulness of God and God is going to act justly and God will deliver us and God will make us to be conquerors despite of enemies' plottings, despite of enemies' negative plotting against our lives. We are assured that God's faithfulness is upon us because we are chosen people to serve him, to hear from him and to see that our lives are changed in whatever situation that we do face. Praise God once again. So in life, the many problems that we do encounter, all tribulations that we do face in our lives, the psalmist, being David, is encouraging us this evening that we should be assured of God's faithfulness because God cannot let his Christian to be swayed away from him because Lord cannot let his beloved people
to be plotted evil against them. But God will always work on our side. But God will always find a place in his heart to leave us the burdens of our lives that we do encounter from the plottings of people, from the plottings of our enemies. We are assured that God, who is our Father and Almighty, he is going to be faithful to us. He is going to deliver us from all evil powers and from all evil possessions of our lives. And he will uplift us to be his people so that we can conquer our enemies and we can lead a righteous life. Praise God once again. My second point is the call to cast our burden to God. I would like to pose this question to we as Christians. That whenever in times of troubles, that whenever in times of tribulations, in times of temptations, in times of hardship in our lives, where do we cast our burden? When we are overburdened by the troubles of this life, where do we rest our troubles? Where do we find a place that our troubles, our temptations, our trials, we shall cast them? Which place do you cast as a Christian? Your burdens, when you are overwhelmed by them. From verse 17 to 22 of chapter 55, we see the significance of surrendering our burdens, fears, and anxieties to God. We find healing and relief of our burdens through prayers to God, trusting that God will sustain us through our trials. In our lives, whichever trial we get, we should not be swayed away from God and look for other alternatives to get solution. But instead, we should trust in God because God is our deliverer, because God is our protector, because God sees whatever he passed through and he is able to accomplish his mission. He is able to protect us and shield us from the snares of our enemies and he will lead us in a correct and righteous path we as Christians so that all our burdens, we rest them on God, who is our mighty, who is our creator. At a time we find Christians, when they are endowed with many problems, when they are endowed with many calamities, when they face difficulties or situations in their lives, they sometimes they get, they, they get swayed away from Christianity. Sometimes you may encounter a problem and then you say, this problem even I, it can't be solved in a church. This problem, the way it is, even I can't present it to my vicar or to my spiritual father. Now again, you find another alternative way to get a solution to your burdens of your life. Some Christians in times of difficulties, where they encounter trials and temptations, it's so now they'll find other sources, other alternative sources to cast their burdens because now they believe that God cannot provide a solution to them. That's why you'll find them, some of them going outside there, going to each doctors, finding other solutions to people, from people, not from Heavenly Father, because they see that this problem, it can't be solved in a church, but this problem or this trial can just be solved in other ways. But we as Christians, who know who God is in our lives? We as Christians who are saved in this world, we should know that whichever case, Whichever problem that we encounter in our lives, we should cast our burdens to God. Because Jesus Christ, when he died, he said that he carried all our burdens. He was given us a ransom to us by God so that he can carry our burdens unto him. So that we can be delivered from all oppressions. So that we can be delivered from all trials and temptations. But now we Christians, we go away from the teachings of Christianity by casting our burdens to other people who are unbelievers, by not believing in God who is our maker. So this evening, it's my ample request that whichever trial you get, whichever trouble you find yourself in, whichever burden you find yourself in, you should know that there is God, and there is God Father in our life, 
who can deliver us from that burden and we should take all our burdens to him because he's able to deliver and he's able to overburden us to deliver us from those burdens so that we can be free and be good people in our lives praise God once again to our third and our last point we have the promise of God's deliverance I know in times of tribulations in times of many trials in our lives despite of the circumstances that you as a Christian, you as a believer are going to encounter in we normally say that at the end of each and every trial, at the end of each and every temptation you as a Christian who has faith in God, you must conquer, you must come out victorious you must believe that God despite of the problems that we do face at the end of those problems we shall find deliverance in times of troubles because God has a great promise to us we as believers reading in verse 23 and I will read it it says but you God will send the wicked down to the pit of destruction murderers and liars will die young but I'm trusting you to save me. So the climax of this chapter, being verse 23, it brings us assurance. It gives us hope of deliverance from all instances that we do encounter as Christians. It gives us hope and encouragement that in our lives, whichever burden we face, that which, whatever encounters that we do get in life, the negative encounters that we Christians we get, at last, we shall know that we are going to conquer. We are going to emerge victorious and we shall be protected from people who are oppressing us, from evil people who are plotting evil plans against our lives. And we shall emerge victors at the end of the day. And God himself will deliver us because he has a great promise to our lives that despite of all trials, temptations, he is going to deliver us from the hands of the brutes and even from the hands of our enemies. So this evening, in this verse, there is, there is assurance of God that he won't let the righteous be shaken when they believe in him, but also promise to sustain us and punish our, our enemies, as we have heard from verse 23. Praise God once again. So, Teva, I know you have many problems in our lives. I know each and every one of us, even I speaking here today, I have my burdens in my heart, in my life. Each and every one of us, however rich you may be, however poor you may be, you'll always find that trouble in your heart that is troubling you. You'll always have something in your heart that is not is causing you not to have sleepless night that you want God to deliver you from. May it be illnesses. May it be hardships of life. May it be evil spirits that you are encountering in your life. May it be anything that you encounter in your life. Just know that God at the end of the time he is going to deliver you and you are going to emerge victor and you shall, conquer, you shall conquer the enemy's trials and the enemy's plottings. So whatever trial you have in your life, brethren, brothers and sisters, you should know that at the end, God is going to deliver us. Whatever situation you undergo, you need to have hope and you need to be encouraged that at last time, and be hopeful that God, who made a promise to me, that he won't let me to suffer that he won't let me me i who is a righteous person in his eyes to suffer he is going to deliver us because we have hope and we are encouraged through our trials that whatever trial might come god is going to deliver us so may it be illness as i have said at the time may it be evil spirits may it be what you need to trust in god and you need to have an encouragement that God, at last time, is going to make us victors of this life. And God will sustain us and God will deliver us from all instances of our enemies. And we will emerge victors. Praise God once again. So, as I wind up, 
our topic of today, finding healing and deliverance in times of troubles. Brothers and sisters of you who have come together here, to hear from God Almighty, to hear the sermon of victory, of victory upon our lives, we pray that may God use us as his vessels, especially in this time of Lent, as we pray, as we fast, as we seek penitence from God, that we should ask God that now, God, it's a time of penitence. We are mourning, we are fasting, we are calling for your forgiveness. The Lord, we have many troubles that we do encounter in our lives. That we have many challenges that we do face in our lives. That Almighty God, now we are coming into a sanctuary on a daily basis, on a Sunday basis, to worship you. We fast, we pray unto you that God may you hear our prayers. That Lord may you deliver us from all tribulations. That Lord, during this time of penitence, of Lent season, that our Father may work for us. That Lord may not let shame to shine on, on our faces, but you should deliver us from all plottings, from all bad things that we are being plotted against, so that we can only get the right things in our lives. And God, that you may give us victory in our lives over our enemies. As you pray during this time of Lent, Brothers and sisters, we should be assured of God's faithfulness. We should know that our God is faithful in unto our prayers. You should know that whichever situation that you have been in, despite of the situation being long term, despite of being ill for many years, 15 years, 10 years, you have been ailing from a certain disease, you have been encountering us a very great problem in your family, in your place of work, in your place of residence, you should know that God is always faithful and God's promises shall come to pass and God will make you to be a victor in his one and you shall conquer your enemies and you shall indeed be delivered from all ensnares and troubles of your life and Lord will make you victorious over all troubles of your life and you are going to become a righteous and a victor in his name. Praise God once again. So as we wind up, we pray that may you be delivered in this service. That may God use you in our little number. That may God use us to hear our prayers, to hear our troubles, to hear our petitions, so that he may answer us and we should get redemption so that we can live lives which are righteous. Praise God once again. Our Heavenly Father, we say thank you for your word from Psalmist David. The Lord Father, through your word, through your scripture, for the Lord Father, you are talking to us. The Lord Father, despite Father, of our problems, troubles, troubles, trials, and temptation, Father, you are assuring us the Lord Father should have faithfulness in you. The Lord Father shall cast our burden further unto you. However hard Father may it be. Father, however Ebenezer, those burden Father may it be. The Lord Father shall cast them unto you. So that Father can deliver those burden Father from us. And Father can emerge victors. Lord Father, we pray for deliverance. Lord Father, we are assured Father of your promise that Ebenezer, through our hope and trust in you, we are going to make us victors in our world. And Lord Father, we are going to be assured that Ebenezer, Father, you are not going to overshake us, Father, from all troubles. And Ebenezer, Father, you shall make us to be victorious in our lives. Thank you, Father, because of this one. The Lord, Father, may your people be delivered from all troubles of their lives. And Ebenezer, you might work for them in their lives so that of Alpha and Omega, you can become part and parcel of their lives. And Lord, Father, you shall say thank you when you say this word, Ebenezer, being part and parcel for Christians. We pray this through Jesus Christ our merciful and high priest. Amen.